One of the most discouraging things in Minecraft is when you put the time in to build a house or other building, you've got it exactly the way you want it, and the next thing you know, someone else comes along and decides to make a little bit of mischief. That's heartbreaking. Let's turn back the clock and see what we could have done to prevent this from happening. The first step we could take is for whoever is hosting the world to visit settings and to scroll down into this section called show classroom settings and to make sure that you're not allowing destructive items. With this setting ticked to the left, you'll see that if you had something like TNT, you actually can't even place it. So that would get rid of, of issues where someone's coming in and blowing things up, but it's not going to prevent people from placing blocks and breaking blocks in your build. Let's look at a setup that the host can put in place in your build area to make sure that only you are allowed to build and break things in the zone that's been designated for you. In order to protect our build, we're going to be using a block called the border block. It's important to know that you do need to have the world builder status turned on in order to place border blocks. If it's off, you won't be able to place them. So this is something that the host of the world would be doing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to head to the middle of my build and I'm going to run a fill command. And I'm actually going to change mine. I'm going to put the border blocks three blocks underground so you actually won't be able to see them and if you look what this is doing is filling the area 15 blocks in either direction along the X and the Z axis with border blocks I'm going to run a second command fill in the spots that I don't want to have border blocks with air. So at this point, if everything worked correctly, if I go outside, I'm going to turn off World Builder. I should reach a point where I can no longer go any further. And if I dig down, I can see there's my border block. So it did go three blocks down, just like the, the fill command wanted it to. And what the border block is doing, if I have world border turned off, or for anyone else who tries to enter this area, they're going to get as far as this border block and it's going to act like an underground fence. No matter how high or low they go, they're not going to be able to pass the area with the world builder and they're not going to be able to break anything above or below those border blocks. So at this point I can build in here but once I'm inside I can't get out and once I'm outside I can't get back in without toggling that world builder status. The next thing we're going to do is set up a command block that is going to let in the correct person into their build and then it's going to give them the option to get back out of their build when they'd like to explore the rest of the world. So I set up a couple of command blocks as kind of a 
guard system and I'll show you what they do. On the outside of the fence we have a repeating command block and it's always active, doesn't need any buttons or any redstone and I just did a 10 tick delay so it's not constantly running and here's the command. It's going to execute this command if the player is within two squares of the command block and if their name matches whatever you put here. So my username on the server is Jason K. So if it sees a match, it's going to teleport me to this location, which is a location inside, inside the fence. So if I get close enough, oh, and I put it on top of a deny block. So once I turn world border off, I can't break this block no matter what I do. So I can't accidentally ruin my, my doorbell system. So now when I get close, as you can see, it just teleported me inside the fence. I broke away some of the sand just so you could see the, the border underground there. So now I'm inside the fence. I can build. I can break. I can do all the things that I should be able to do inside. And now I have another command block. This one is attached to a button. Both are on top of deny blocks that I placed when I was in world builder mode, so I can't can't break anything here. But now on this block I have it set as an impulse, so it's not going to do anything until I press this button. It's going to teleport the closest player five blocks away on the x-axis and five blocks away on the z-axis. So when I'm ready to leave the, the safety of my gated community here, I can press this button. And as you can see, it just teleported me back out of the fence. So when I'm out here, just like anyone else, I can't get inside until I get closer to my command block. So now let's see what happens when the griefer from before comes back. So as you'll see, the griefer is going to hit the wall. He's not going to be able to break anything that is even with the wall or inside the wall. And if he goes and stands on top of the, the guard command block there, the command block is testing for my username. So the griefer is not going to be able to do anything there. And since it's on a deny block, he can't break it. And so he's given up and he's gone to look for an easier target. In this tutorial, we saw how you can use the Allow Destructive Items setting to protect your property from TNT and other destructive forces. We also learned how to make use of border blocks, deny blocks, and command blocks to create a pretty solid security system for your builds. Happy building! And if, like me, you were wondering if TNT can explode its way past border blocks, Take a look for yourself. If you don't have the disallow destructive object setting on, TNT can blow up past border blocks.